Okay, well, we are live at 11.05. It's going to be a great show today. This is some exciting stuff. I've been looking forward to this. Corey McMahon, he's the, uh, he's the new old school right here. I look into your car. I mean, how many times do you see a name <laughs> hanging on the car? You just don't see that very often. Not often anymore. No, so I'm, I'm here with Corey. Corey used to work with us, and Corey's, uh, well, I used to say you're a wannabe pinhead, <laughs> but I think Corey's, like, you've made the hump. Now you just got to put some years on. Yeah. I'm so, there. I, it's going to be a good show. You're going to go ahead and throw some licks down mm -hmm. for us and show us how it's done and... Um, I've been pretty impressed. Well, I got to say, I, I hassled you a lot. I think we called you just sun, a little bit. We called you Sunshine for a long time when you Years. first started with us. Years, yeah. He's from California and wears red shoes. Yeah. So, idea man here. He's here to give you, you know, some inspiration. Look over you, kind of guide you along. Why don't you show us your car? And then I asked Corey. We we got an old go kart that we had for years and just sat there and been sitting in the office. You mind to throw some stripes on the back of that? While you're doing that, I haven't striped for 15 years. Okay. I'm going to grab my old Bondo board. Uh, i got to say, I started this morning. I've been painting some stuff, so in between what I've been doing, I've been throwing a few down. I'm kind of shaky in my old age, but why don't you do that? Why don't you do some stripes? I'll go see what I can get done, and I'll meet up with you in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But stay, hang into the show. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one, I'm telling you. Sounds good. This is my 27 Roadster. It's a spirit body that I got back in like 2008 and just finished it this year. So it took me a while. Um, I'll give you a walk around real quick. I wanted something real old school looking, something kind of like late 50s, early 60s. So it's got a Buick nail head. It's a 322 Buick nail head motor. Um, it's a lot of torque. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And then I made my Zoomy pipes, so those are all homemade. I did about every, pretty much everything on here with the exception of the paint. I did all the body work and then I had my uh, one of my friends paint it for me. And funny thing is, I didn't even know the color of the car, so I picked it up. It was a surprise. Um, but yeah, I put probably 46, 4,700 miles on it since the 1st of May. So it's definitely a driver. And right now it's a little dirty because I haven't had a chance to wash it from my last road trip. But it's definitely it's a, a daily driver. Oh, that is for sure. <laughs> a 10 mile per gallon daily driver. <laughs> but it sure is fun. Yeah, it's got the, I did the ET wheels on the front and the five-spoke Americans on the rear to kind of keep it that old-school 60s look with the white walls and the cheater slicks. It's got open headers and so. Now this is the old school here. Yeah, I got my fur. He's <laughs> got his fur. I love it. It's getting a little dirty, but it, it's fun. <laughs> old-school gauges. So it's a pretty fun car. I got my club plaque on the back for the Cross Members Car Club. I'm a member of them, we're a nationwide club. It's a good group of guys. Little pinstripe. Little pinstripe. I did it about two in the morning one time. I was bored. I was bored at two in the morning, but that's what happened. I guess we'll go inside and sounds good. For anybody that's never been here, here is we call death. And he's gonna re he's gonna do some pinstriping for us on the, uh, the rear on the rear, rear of the deck lid. So let's hear some pointers here. So the first thing I did I had it kind of laid out. I just kind of um, some guys don't, some guys do. I, I like to just put a couple little couple little lines to make sure everything is symmetrical and even and all that stuff. And over here I've got uh, a few different brushes. Uh, this one is my favorite, so I'll use that one. It's just a little Mac brush I've had for years. I love those things. And I got some red and some white one shop. So we're just going to do a real old school uh, pinstripe design. So I'll get started here. I'll do the white first. I'll use that as my base color. So how long have you been doing pinstriping? I'm um, off and on for quite some time, but it wasn't until about like the last probably four or five years I've really taken it serious. So I enjoy it. I learned from a, a guy out in California who was a, kind of a big time striker out there. 
so he kind of taught me the basics, and then I had to learn from there. I don't have anybody here to teach me, so it was all just kind of learning through practice over the years. So self-taught. Self-taught pretty much. And then like, I'll, I'll see designs of um, other pin sharpens, kind of pick up some stuff from there. So one thing I always do, I always do kind of like a teardrop to begin with, and I always incorporate a circle in there somehow, just kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like a, I'd say, kind of art deco-y look. So I'm kind of simple and elegant. I always try to do that. So the first thing I'll do, I'll start in the middle and put my first teardrop. I'll come back with the other side. So now that's the basis of this, and then we'll just kind of add on to it. Um, I think this time I'm going to put another teardrop on each side. I kind of I like those. I think they look good. BC is in the back doing his own pinstripe, and he hasn't done it in about 15 years. He's back there working. So then we'll compare when we're done, right? Yep. The old school versus the new school. <laughs> Takes a good steady hand and practice, I'm sure. You've done quite. You've done a few here. I have. Um, did that 34, I think, the recent one. Yeah, that was the most recent one. I did that little 23 track roadster for the guy from Kansas. So now that's kind of. I like to do these three teardrops. Usually, usually like one to three teardrops in the middle. So I have my three, and then now I'm going to add on to the outside to. Make the design a little bit wider. So we'll just do something real simple here. That's kind of what I like, but just the, nothing too crazy. And that's where my little lines come in handy. Now I kind of I can look to the other side and match it up pretty good, make sure everything's real symmetrical and consistent. This is where I usually mess up, but we'll see if I can not. Pressure's on. Oh boy. Doing good, Larry. Thanks for asking. I'll take it. That's not bad. So now here's reading. This is usually how kind of. I guess all my designs kind of start out something similar to that, so I'm just going to keep building in the middle and see what I can come up with here. How many cars do you think you've pinstriped? Oh, I lost count. It's quite a few. Every year I do Christmas ornaments, and those things kind of drive me crazy, but they're really good practice because they're so small, but I like doing those. So maybe uh, we can offer, around Christmas time, maybe we'll get some ornaments for Corey and we'll put them on uh, for sale, decorate Looks your nice. tree. Nice hot rod themed Christmas tree. Yeah. I've seen them. They're pretty cool. I've tried to get, tried to get some for my, <laughs> put on my tree, but my wife said no. <laughs> it's no fun. Come back, shadow a couple more little details. I like to put a little couple lines across my teardrops. Uh, I've always kind of like that. Sorry for the light and the LED lights glare off that. Off 
that black dick lid. So I like to keep my designs nice and simple, so um, I think that's going to be about it for the, the white color. Now we'll come back with some red, add some more paint to that. And the white and the red on black is, it's been used quite a bit, but it's a real old school look. And I love it. So that's what we'll do. So where do you get your, uh, what what uh, paint. paint do you recommend? Uh, one Shot is the paint I've always used. House of Color has some stuff. Um, but I use One Shot. I, have, I go up to Springfield, Missouri to get it. I've ordered it a few times, but it's easier. I just go up to National Art Shop up in Springfield, Missouri. And they have a ton of One Shot, and they have brushes, and I can ask questions, and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. They know the stuff up there. Can you tell here? I usually always end up with either thumbprints on stuff or paint all over me or something. So, we'll see if I do the same today. Are the are, are brushes a little different? Yeah, um, everyone's a little bit different. This one I like, it's, it's MAC and it's, um, I believe it's just like a, like a natural hair, like a squirrel hair. And I have another one that I've been using, I kind of go back and forth and it's a, uh, synthetic hair, and it's it's pretty cool. It's a good brush. That one was a little bit more. These Macs aren't too expensive, but some of them you can really spend money, especially like when you get them lettering. I have a couple of lettering quills that are, you know, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars a piece. And I've got a ton of them, so it adds up. And the paint's not cheap anymore. Yep. Just come back. We'll add some red in right here. And uh, I don't want to put too much on here. I just want to accent the white. So we'll just kind of we'll keep it nice and clean. And just kind of something that kind of mirrors what's already there to add to it. You don't want to take away. You don't want one color taken away from another one. Yeah, we need to get you out here to do some uh, letters on our uh, oh, windows. Oh, yeah. That's what you guys need. Something, we'll do some more circles here. Jason says, looks good, Corey. Thank you. Here's those kind of circles I was talking about trying to incorporate in. They're kind of hard to do, which is why I like to do them. So it's like, if you if you're bad at them, it shows up, you know, that you're you're you've screwed them up. But if you get pretty good, they're uh, they're kind of challenging, and it kind of really brings out the design. I think it makes the design look a lot better. So, what do you recommend for somebody that's going to start out, wanting to do try to do pinstriping? There's a couple of really good books out there. Um, Herb Martinez is a striper out in California, and I have his book. I really like it. And then Alan Johnson is a big time striper. He has a book, so I would recommend maybe checking out like some of those books, and then just picking up a can of paint and a little Mac brush and start practicing. I had a, I had a piece of uh, metal that I would do just straight lines on all day. It sucked. It was awful. So I would do all kinds of straight lines, wipe them off, and do curved lines. And as awful and boring as that was, it really. It's really important because it kind of, it's those. That's the basics of striping right there. So once you get good at that, then you can move on to doing designs. And then I, like I said, with the ornaments, that's why I used to do to practice because they're so small and difficult and challenging. Those really helped out. I think I'll add just maybe like one more little something on the bottom there. I think it needs another little design. Nothing too much. But just a little bit to fill in here.
So do you have a symbol yet that you, or you just put your name? I usually just kind of put my name at the bottom. Uh, some guys have little designs and stuff yeah. like that. Everybody has their own. So I just kind of, I write my name kind of small. Just don't change your name. No, <laughs> then I'll be, yeah. Just a symbol like. Yeah, uh, Prince. <laughs> Prince. It's funny, I was watching a video about Ed Roth, like, talking about how I get paint on myself. And Ed Roth, from what I understand, he used to always wear white. He'd have white pants and a white shirt. And he would be at the shows, striping, painting shirts, whatnot, stuff like that. And at the end of the day, he would auction off all his clothing and get money from it. So he was always kind of business-minded. Oh, have you ever heard that story, Bob? I'm back. Uh, yes. Lots of Roth stories. Hey, I got something for you. I was back there looking yeah. for my brushes and stuff, and we're, we're talking old school. Mm -hmm. I'm not just so old school. I've got mine broke in, so this is, you know what it is. Let's I don't see. only just oh, know what yeah. it is. <laughs> Mine's broke in. Let's see if Any, Anybody on, on there know what that is? We're going to find out, okay. <laughs> Here, let's look at it again so they can get a yeah, close-up. see it again. Here we go. Got a little burn on the end, you know. Been around for a while. Kind of wax and still a little wax residue on there. Probably hadn't been used for, <laughs> for maybe 25, 30 years, 20 years. Ah, uh, maybe maybe fifteen years. No answers yet. No answers. If you can guess what it is, I may do a program where I show you how it works. Corey, you know what impressed me most about with you when yep. I first met you? What was that? You were dropping names like boom, 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 oh, yeah. boom, <laughs> and I'm like, this kid is like a kid. How does he know all these people? I have. You're, you're talking about my contemporaries and all this. Well, I remember like when we first moved here. We're from California originally. And uh, some of the guys out there my dad used to hang out with, I didn't know, were big-time people. Rob Powell, he's a big-time customizer. Cole Foster's a big-time bike builder. I didn't know who these people were, but I always kind of remember them, you know? So then we moved back here. We were at the A&W Car Show. We were here like a week, and there was a guy that I recognized. I told my dad, I said, I know that guy. He's like, mm, you know, you know, you've only been here a week. I said, no, I know that guy. So we go home, and I spend the whole night just frantically looking through magazines. And I walked out and showed my dad a magazine. I said, here you go. And it was Norm Grabowski. He was there. At, uh, this was probably 2008. Norm, Norm passed away a couple years. Yeah. Kind of sad. I, we talked pretty often. I, we're kind of close. Mm -hmm. I have a Norm skip, uh, shifter skull here. Those are awesome. Norm was good guy. I got a I got a little Norm collection back there of my Norm stuff. Okay. So one guy says a shoehorn, like <laughs> I did, and the other guy says it's a lead paddle. Hey, lead paddle, lead paddle. All right. Good job. That's it. So. If I can find some old 70-30, I don't, I don't have any lead out there. I think I still got my wax. We'll go do it in the woods somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I may cut out some metal since I got trash talked all the time for being a fiberglass guy. Somebody said the queen of fiberglass. I corrected him. I hope I'm the king of fiberglass. Right now I've done enough of it. But Kelly, you know who Kelly is? I do. You do? Who's Kelly? Tom Kelly. He was a, Tom Kelly. What, one of the crazy painters? There's like four of them or something like that? Three. Three, three crazy paintings. I can't remember all of them. The Baron? Mm -hmm. Who was the Baron? I don't know. The Baron was, was uh, Tom Kelly's grandpa. You know what the Baron did? No. I'm trying to think. The Baron put stripes on Model Ts. Okay. And put stripes on, on the old, back, back way, way back when they were still had horses and buggies. Oh, yeah. Did. Okay. So Tom Kelly was about 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And he had a friend of his that wanted some pinstripes on his car. And he convinced his 62-year-old grandpa. <laughs> and I, I, I apologize to the I can't remember his real name, mm -hmm. the Baron, to, to do it. Mm -hmm. So from that, who was the third one in the, the crazy? I want to say Roth. Roth. Okay. Yeah, so they brought second. Roth in. Yeah. So this is the Kelly. This that is, is awesome. Kelly and Son. Pretty cool. The panel. I'm thinking he's getting there, isn't he? A few more years. <laughs> Getting there. That's good. Wait, uh, to keep keep it over here, and I'll, I'll I'll bring some of these in. These are some people I've got to know. See, when you're on the road doing all the shows mm -hmm. and stuff, which I haven't done for when's the last time we even went to a show? In years. Five, six, seven years yeah. ago. It's like being in a carnival in a circus, mm -hmm. but it's like a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. 
You got a you got a symbol? What, you got something you uh, No, I've got some name. Just his name. Uh, just my name. There, there's not I some identifying thing in there if I see I'll go, oh that's no, probably no. boring. I need to come up with a, a, another little symbol. Oh come on. <laughs> so okay. If you see a pelton somewhere, if you see actually let's put it this way, if you see a fire ant, mm -hmm. you're probably looking at a pelton. Mm -hmm. He's somehow he's, this one just way exaggerated, but mm -hmm. he'll somehow get a fire ant somewhere, especially when he's doing flames. So this is a pelton. Okay. Pretty cool. I like. I love that one. Helen's a cool guy. Let's see what else we got? You ever been in a panel gym? Uh, I have. Once. Have you really? Yeah. It was like a small one. A small one. How big can it be? Yeah. I mean, what was there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven hours. Yeah, it was eight, just basically just eight hours on this one. We yeah. got the Egyptian and Blano. I have seen the low tube man. Mm -hmm. I loved oh. his dad. Some of these guys. Okay, oh, here's yeah. some symbols. You know who that is? I don't. You don't know who that is? Say he looks kind of Japanese, maybe. Japanese. I'm just guessing. That. We talk, okay. Let me give you a clue. We talked about him already. Tom Kelly. That's Tom okay. Kelly. So if you see one of these, you probably look at it a Kelly. So every every color on here, the Egyptian had the green and tilted up just a little. Those LED lights. There you go. Does it look like me? Some. Uh, I'm into goats now, people. Yeah. It is my new thing. I'm, I'm raising goats. Alpine French Alpines. It's my my habit. So every say two or three minutes, mm -hmm. all these guys get a panel. Do your little thing, pass your Press panel over, over and move it over, and then at the end of the thing, time's up. What's it look like? There we go. Pretty good. I mean, it's so that's from I mean, a panel jam. So you've done panel jams. I've done one. One. Nice. The wizard. The wizard used to put together the legends of pinstripe. Yeah. And they traveled uh, different shows, mm -hmm. starboard shows, and <clears throat> it was a lot of fun because a lot of the guys were there and you mm -hmm. got to hang out and it was it was just a lot of fun. All right, here we go. Well, I'm going to save this one. All right. I'm so old. I'm so old that I'm new old school. Yeah. Because when it was old, I was yeah. Yeah, it was new. It was like I mean, you put some pinstripes on a on a nasty hood that had cracks in it, so you're trying to hide yeah. stuff. I mean, that was I'm not making that yeah. up either. So in today's world, there's a lot. Of, that's very good. That's symmetrical. Mm -hmm. If you look at this. If you look at the line right here, a lot of times you'll see it'll be off from this side to that. It's it's not tilt easy because you're left-handed. Did you tilt it? There you go. What was that? Left-handed and right-handed. I mean, you got to pull the same mm -hmm. line, but you got to pull it the opposite way. That, that's very good. Uh, and I'm not even gonna. I can't hardly see the flaws. There's a couple that are. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, but that. I'm not. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> There's no flaws. We'll go with There's that. There's no flaws. It's awesome. But I'm this morning. I'm doing about ten things. We're in this new age of we're talking to people here, we're doing mm -hmm. that, there's stuff going on there, We get my phone probably yeah. buzzing and it's going, it's like, yeah, there's no symmetry, mm -hmm. there's no, <sighs> this is, so oh. yeah, <laughs> so I was, I was just like frazzled, I'm, I'm so frazzled, <laughs> so this is in, it looks like um, ancient art here, mm -hmm. <laughs> it belongs on the caveman wall, so it's pretty simple, but I don't know what it is. I, I kept getting confused. Well, let me look at your pants. Are you a pinstriper? These are new pants, so. You just pinstriped. Did, you, did he do this? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have a little bit of blue, but, you know. If you ever see a real, a real old school <laughs> pinstriper, you can't hardly, you can't hardly miss, miss <laughs> that. That would be these pants in a few What your hands look like? Uh, Holy <laughs> cow. This guy's an EMT, though, so that's yeah. a good thing. He saves lives uh, all day long. I should get my hands clean. So I, I figured I'm just keeping you going farther than that because an artist has got to mm -hmm. be like bizarre and into his thing. So uh, I, I use BC. Mm -hmm. I've been on the internet, and the way that is, you know, I'm hidden under mm -hmm. BC. Who's that? Except, dang, I got some thumbprints <laughs> on here. <laughs> so we got thumbprints around. So if you ever want to identify who did this one, yeah. go to the thumbprint. I even oh, took it a step farther. Yeah. If you want to recreate this monster. Mm -hmm. Jurassic Park style. Yeah. I had a little owie. Oh boy. So we put some DNA in there. <laughs> so, so this is an original. Uh, There'll be no doubt who did this one. I don't know if it's any good or not, but I, I don't think I put it on my car. <laughs> but that leads us up to this one. They want to know how old you are, Corey. Oh, I don't know what's in my age. I'm 26. I think. 26. And he's getting, he's getting good and getting better. Yeah. Myers. Oh, Ron Myers? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, over in, uh, what, Oklahoma? Yeah. Yeah, awesome guy. I haven't seen him for years. If you see him, 
Tell my says hi. Mm-hmm. Great pinstriper. Art is in the mind, mm -hmm. not the brush. And and boy, you get some of these pinstriper guys together, and it gets crazy. Mm -hmm. So we usually finish up with we got a yellow book mm -hmm. thought for the day. Okay. Eh, we're gonna go a little different direction. I got a couple three sayings. We took this one around. I got my little sculpture there. I got my thing there. I got my deal. We built cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Aren't we cool? They're cool. People say that. <laughs> cool. You're cool guys. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I got thinking, man, sometimes we build idols. Yeah. It's not good. No. So when I put this one together, here's, here's out of Isaiah. All who make idols are nothing. <clears throat> and the things they treasure are worthless. So let's put this stuff into perspective. Mm -hmm. This is good. We're created in the Creator's image. That mm -hmm. makes us creative. This is my buddy. Yeah. This is Roth. Some of his cars. I've been lucky to... I mean, he's been gone for a while mm -hmm. now, but I got to know his kids. I got to hang with him. So I had him sign this one for me. It says, The Spirit Industry. God does talk to us. Let's listen. Okay? So that's from Ross awesome. back in 97. So the thought for today... We're not going to use the yellow book. Mm -hmm. You know Ernie? How about man? Ernie Gilcrease? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, met him? you heard him or you know him? I, I know of him and I've, I think I've met him before. I don't know him a lot though. Ernie, everybody in this, you talked about the people mm -hmm. you got to meet and don't know mm -hmm. who they are until you find out mm -hmm. who they are. and That's really what leads this. I Surely, I got to know you through Bob Knight. Mm -hmm. So you know Bob Knight. Oh, yeah. A car guy in this area. Oh, yeah. Cool Mentor, mentored a yeah. lot of young people to be car guys. They'll probably forget more than I'll ever know, type of thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I mentored you at all. I just picked on yeah. you for a long time. For a little bit. A lot. And so we'll keep on doing that. But it's, you know, it's what keeps it going and what, mm -hmm. it's what makes it fun. Mm -hmm. I like old school. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, here's how much I like old school. This is sacred here. Hang on. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was looking for this. Do you know a Von Otto? Von Otto. O T T O. Maybe I'm not saying it right. Von, I don't know. Hmm. He's an airbrusher. I may have tried for stuff before. I took I my know. my current yeah. on the board. It still had a couple years to go mm -hmm. and turned it into my little pen. I've been saving this one to oh, do my yeah. spin striping. So I'm, I'll have you can I get you to do me a panel. Yeah. Okay. This Perfect. is. These just don't happen now. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that to you and give me a panel, so I'm going to put you on my wall. All right. But here's my saying for today. We're not going to do a proverb by Ernie. He's got two books. They're mm -hmm. pretty cool. Uh, saying by Ernie, proverb by Ernie. And I say they're not proverbs, but they mm -hmm. don't hold the same weight. So I skip past proverbs here. I went right to Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. If you go to Ecclesiastes 1, chapter 9, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 9, here's what it says. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Mm. So we just build up on what's been done <laughs> yeah. before, but I don't know. I got caveman art going on. Yeah. So I can't wait to see the show. Yeah. I, I'm, I want to hear what you had to say about your car. Mm -hmm. and um, This is how long does it take for this stuff to dry? Um, I'm, I'm throwing stuff on top of my, my board there. It takes so yeah, you, know, you don't want to. Not no, I don't. You'll smear it. You, you'll you'll you smear it. Fingerprints in there. I mean, if, if you I don't think it's a single fingerprint in there. That's pretty good. That is Normally, good. I have at least one, but I'm not trying yeah, to. Yeah, this, this takes a quite a long time yeah. to dry. This is not your normal paint. No. And if you do want a pinstripe, I hope you give them a lot of tips. But mm -hmm. just grabbing car paint, mm -hmm. it will frustrate you so fast. Yeah, you cannot pinstripe with car paint. Mm -hmm. It just. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It goes everywhere. It'll, it'll never work. No. Even in an emergency, it don't work. Thank you for being no with us. This is great. So we're going to get this uploaded and see what people think. Sounds Thanks good. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.